Sometimes in Excel, you have order cost, order cost, so column pairs or multiples, and you want to unpivot it to go from something like this, which only has about five rows, to something like this that has many more rows, but fewer columns, and how to do that in a way that's linked. So for example, there, if I change that to pants, I can just right click here and refresh, and now it will update it to whatever I need to. So my name is David Benham, and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tick of the Workplace, I'm coming on my channel. I love talking about this really cool underused feature within Power Query. So let's get started. By the way, if you just want a copy of this workbook, you can download it. The link is on the description below. So here we have a couple of scenarios that we'll go through. So in the first one, we have one row for headers. This is the easiest case scenario. Then in the second one, we have multi-row headers, two rows in this case, and we also have duplicates, and that really adds an extra step you need to do. And in the third one, we have duplicates, and we actually have three columns, order, cost, and name, and we also have some blanks. So we're going to see how that impacts it. So for starters, I'm going to just select this table, and these are different countries that I'm going to add later on. I'm just going to show you how easy it is to add new countries when you've already done it. So select it and go to the Data tab and choose From Table or Range. Press OK, and this will open up the Power Query Editor. Absolutely love the Power Query Editor. If you're not already using it, and it will definitely save you time. Highly recommend it. So just to show you what's happened in the core Excel though, it has changed the color and the format of my table, and it's made it into a special Excel table object, which doesn't work with merge cells, so I'll need to do that in a different way later on. But for now, it's fine. So I want to go through a process that goes from seven columns and four rows into three columns, one for item name, one for the name, so Iran order, Iran cost, now order, now cost, these will be rows in column number two, and then column number three will just be the values. So there is something you can do in Power Query called Unpivot, which I love. So if you go to Transform, uh, then you click on the drop down and you choose Unpivot Other Columns whilst you have the item one selected. The other unpivoting options, I generally don't use them, and especially not for this scenario. And now I have attribute and value. So this is what I wanted. Now I've got 24 rows and I have one column for this and one column for this. I actually want to go a little bit further. I want to split this column by the limiter and I'm going to split it at the space. By the way, you can have more advanced options. If you have sometimes something with space, like let's say you had the country name Burkina Faso has a space in its name. So you can do rightmost delimiter in that case but in this case, it wouldn't matter. Make sure you have consistent casing. So if I click on this one, I want to choose format and capitalize each word just to be on the safe side. And then I want to go to having one column for order and one column for both. And instead of having 24 rows, I'm going to have half, which is 12 rows. So to do that, you click on the column that has order and cost, the things that you want that will become separate columns. And then you go to pivot column. So I unpivoted and now I'm repivoting. The values that I want to repivot are the value column, this one. And in advanced options, best to choose don't aggregate. This doesn't always need to be done if you have just numbers, but for good practice, I recommend just doing it as standard. And there we go. Now we've got the 12 rows, which is what we wanted. A, lot, a couple of last things. So shift click both of these ones and go to data type whole number. Always need to say your data types for numbers and dates in Power Query and then rename this one by double-clicking it to country. Perfect. Now, by the way, what would have happened had I not capitalized it? So if I click on the X on the applied steps, now after pivoting my columns, I'm going to see it's going to have order cost for lowercase, order cost for uppercase, and there's nulls where the other ones should be filled in. So make sure that you have consistent capitalization. You can also get to it by right-click and transform and then capitalize each word. Now, if you do add a step in the middle of the query, like I've just done, you'll get this pop up. Just press insert if you're pretty confident about doing it, and then go to the last step, and now it will show you it as you need it. Now, to go back to the regular Excel grill, if you go to the Home tab and the Close and Load, that will now create a new worksheet. In this case, it's called Table 1. Probably good to rename it, but if you click on this one, you can then right-click and choose Cut, and you can move this wherever you want. So I'm going to move it here. So I'm going to paste it. And now this is the query that's linked. Note that it has the special table options. So like this one, that it made my data into a table. I can change the color. 
and formats and other things. But one of the things that's really cool about tables is that they automatically expand. So if I have a couple of new countries, I can right click and cut. And then here I can paste. And that has automatically grown with the formatting. It does have these line separators, but that's because I already had those. If I was to get rid of my borders everywhere, then it will still keep the kind of table borders between the rows. But now if I were to just cut and paste this one, it has automatically grown again. So now all I need to do is right click and refresh this table and it automatically grows with my extra rows, which is really cool. So next one up, this is multi row head is a little bit more complicated. And also we have duplicates and that leads to a couple of extra steps. If I was to go straight to the data tab and for table or range, I'm going to cut and paste and show you why that goes wrong. So data tab from table or range makes my data into a table, press OK. So loads up Power Query, I'm going to make that window smaller. And here you can see what's happened. So it's actually unmerged all my cells. So it's called Cambodia column one, Lao column two, Malaysia column three, etc. That's not what I want. So I'm going to click X and choose to discard the change, which is the new query that I made. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my data into Power Query another way. So if I select it and I go to this name box here, I'm going to say multi row like that. And now Power Query says from table or range, this is now a named range. So that works as well. So if I click that, so it's now loaded this up. But what is key is I hasn't unmerged my cells or changed anything about the layout of my data. So firstly, we need to go to the applied steps and we need to exit out of these two steps. Because before I promote my headers, I need to merge these two header rows. Now there is no merge rows in Power Query, but there is a merge columns. So in order to get that, I first have to go to the transform tab and transpose. And then I need to make sure that this says Cambodia, this says Lao, this is Malaysia, etc. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to fill down. And then I can control click or shift click both of these two and I can choose merge columns. Now my advice is to choose a sort of combination of characters that you would never intentionally write like that. The name doesn't matter in this case. And then I have one column for headers, which means if I transpose it back, I have one row for headers. And if I go to use headers as first row, they are all in the right place. Because I have duplicates, I do need to add a column that's called an index column. I'm going to show you what happens if you don't do that. But essentially, you need to do that if you have duplicates or even if you could have duplicates in the future because it will break. So click on item and then click on index with control. And then I'm going to go to transform and I'm going to choose unpivot other columns. And now I'm going to do kind of the same thing as before. So split column by delimiter. I've already pre-written my delimiter. So I'm going to do that one and then the tilde and then press OK. And now I have this one that I can re-pivot. So click on pivot. And the values column is going to be value, advanced options best practice to always choose don't aggregate. And there we go. Now it works pretty much. I don't need the index column, so I can click the delete button on my keyboard. I can rename this to country. I can rename this to item without that. These are the right data type. Perfect. So it works really, really well. So now I can go to close and load. By the way, for this one, if you want to add this to the data, it's not going to automatically grow like it did nicely in the other one. So you go, I'll just kind of paste these ones. What I need to do is go to the formula tab and then go to the name manager and make sure that multi-row edits, not multi-row one, because that's the query output. This one, instead of ending here, it actually ends at K, which is the end of Thailand. And then if I press close, now if I were to right click on the table output and refresh, now it will work with my new countries. So back in here, we're going to do one more example here. We also have duplicates. We have three columns now, and we also have entirely blank sections. So in this one, I'm, I need to do the same thing. So I need to give it 
an extra name. So I'm going to call this complex data that I'm going to go to the data tab from table arrange. Now exit out of these, by the way, there are some settings in Power Query options and file and then options and settings and query options where you can say that it doesn't automatically detect the headers and the types, then you have to exit out if that's something you regularly do. So here, same steps, I'm going to transform, transpose. This one I'm going to fill down. These two I'm going to shift click or control click and merge columns. I'm going to choose the separated to be custom and I'm just going to do one tilde this case. Merge this fine. Now I'm going to transpose back, use headers as first row. So that one we already know. I'm actually now not going to add the index and we'll see what happens. So I've got shirt and shirt here. And I'm not going to add the index and we'll see that it actually breaks. So I'm going to click on item. I'm going to control click on notes because we have notes at the end. And then I'm going to go to unpivot other columns. And now in this one, I do have order cost name, order cost name, order cost name. And the notes is a bit on this side. That's all fine. I can deal with that by going to split by delimiter. Already pre-suggest that. Great. So I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to choose pivot column. There was before, now I'm going to create three new columns, one for order, one for cost, one for name. But well, my values column is going to be value and advanced options. It's important to go to don't aggregate. But it does give me errors. Why well, did it give me errors? Because I did not add that index. So if I was to click on this, and I'm actually just going for the demo purposes to change to count, we're going to see that. There's two of them. So it can't put two values inside the same cells, so it gives you an error, and that's what's happening here. So I'm going to exit out of this step and unpivot to other columns. I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete until end, and I need to redo them. So now I need to add a column, an index column. By the way, if you want to start from one, like the actual row numbers, you can click the drop down and choose from one. This is what it's doing, it's just numbering the rows. Next, I'm going to choose transform and click on the columns I want to not unpivot. So item, a double negative that can be a bit confusing, but these three ones, and then unpivot other columns. And now if I click on this one and split by delimiter, press OK with that character. This one, I'm going to pivot it, and I'm going to choose value and advanced options. I wish it was just there. It's not like there isn't enough real estate to give you that option. And there you go, order cost name. Click on this one and I'm gonna choose a whole number. This one the same, whole number. Rename, country, and get rid of the pipe afterwards. I can also move this one, right click and move to end. That can also work. I don't need my index so I can delete that one. Perfect. So item, country, order, cost, name, and then notes. So when you're done, you can just click on close and load. All right, so that's been my video. Remember, you can download this file and try it out if you like to. My name has been David Benayman. I'm going to have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using technical web I'm coming to channel. Thanks for watching.